Another word, risk, I'm going to do this quickly. Risk is, uh, whenever I'm on a panel, somebody wants us to, and, and, uh, and for philanthropy, they want us to talk about risk, because we always love risk. We embrace risk. All philanthropists, we love, we want risky stuff. Go do something risky. The board is always telling the CEO, we want you to do, take a chance, take a risk, but don't fail. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting thing. I mean, you would never tell your investment person that. You know, investment people get it. You know, there's a very risk return thing. They get all that. But we we are told uh, constantly to embrace risk. We're also told we have what's the phrase? We have the social venture capital. That's what we have. So we have to go out there, and you know, like venture capital. And you ask a venture capitalist, what percentage of those uh, little um, puppies come in? Well, one in ten. Right. Do you think anybody's board wants to hear, yeah, one in ten of my grants works out? I don't think they want to hear that, actually. <laughs> but the, the concept that we are risk takers, that we can do that where government can't and others can't, people generally like that image. I'm telling you that I don't think it actually informs us. I don't think we're particularly bold in the philanthropic sector. And I, I include us. I'm not, I'm not pointing at, at them. It's us. Um, Usually, we say what we're trying to do is, it isn't a, a, a crisp thing that you can be clear about whether you succeeded or failed. Very often, we are part of a movement, and you can't really tell whether we did very well or very poorly. And so, and we do other things. We minimize. We use game theoretics. We, we, we avoid going for the best outcome uh, by, uh, by just simply betting on avoiding the worst outcome. And we do good stuff, but maybe not best. Um, when you think about risk, I like thinking about not the kind of risk I've been talking about, which is to your resources that you put out there that is in the zero-sum game. I like the reput reputational risk question. That's the one that has fascinated me since I've come, because I haven't really struggled so much with the resource risk, but the reputational risk has really been out there for me. Uh, my favorite is the one where uh, I, I got uh, this Constitution Project, I think it's called, and they had done a study of uh, post-9-11 uh, interrogation um, techniques in the United States. Uh, and they wanted, they came to us and asked if we would help fund the dissemination of the results. The results were, in short, that we had for a period of years violated U.S. law and international law with our interrogation practices. I got strong advice not support the dissemination of this. I decided to support the dissemination of this. And then, uh, you know, I got the sandbags and uh, I, I waited for some bad things to happen. And then the New York Times came out and supported this. And I, I wanted to send them a card or something, but I didn't. <laughs> so I, I like to think that even if the Times hadn't, that I would feel good about it. But I, I thought that was risk. And I think occasionally, uh, we can do risky things. The, the McCarthy Foundation, uh, before I came, uh, supported um, the review of copyright laws, being critical of them in some cases. Internet regulation is something we're working on now. Uh, we, our whole housing thing is in rental housing, not home ownership, which is a little off the norm. Uh, and I think, uh, and I'm struggling with one right now, which we can talk about maybe after class, um, which is the declassification engine having to do with declassification and a project at Columbia University. Um, so I, I think this is an interesting area for foundations and one where we ought to try to be a little more.